penetration, but uh, they couldn't get Hart Hartman. He gets the corner. He's out to the 40. Good straight drop. It brushed heavily and hit as he throws. Herman back makes the catch, leads it, touchdown! Bensler drops back and lofts a pass over the center. Caught for a touchdown. Throws, but he's got Gatlin open. He nice makes catch. a great leaping grab. We're at Lakeland College on a cloudy and rainy afternoon. Hello, everybody. My name is Mike Martin. Joining me is a coach, Chris Wright. Today, the Lakeland College Muskies play the Concordia Cougars in, uh, a, in a you know playoff atmosphere, actually, because uh, they're in first place in the league. They need a win today, and they need some other uh, situations to happen. But uh, it's an important game. Yes, it is. Last week, uh, Lakeland went over to Concordia, beat them, got themselves in an opportunity to win the conference championship. Last year, it was a three-way tie, and unfortunately, with the tiebreakers, didn't make the playoffs. What Lakeland has in front of us, a little bit of concern is, you know, will there be a letdown today? Um, they're playing a team that hasn't won a football game all season, but the only thing they can worry about is will we have some type of letdown? Maybe the weather will be influential in that as well. But big games, you know, Coach Zabrowski came here three years ago and said one of his goals was to get to the NCAA uh, playoffs, and in sight, he has that now. He's, he's won the games that he needs to do, but can they finish it off? Now, before we confuse our listeners or watchers, uh, there's Concordia of Mequon, that's here in Wisconsin, right. and then there's Concordia of Illinois, and there's a Concordia in Michigan, there's a Concordia out in Nebraska somewhere, so don't be confused, we're talking about Concordia of Illinois today, and uh, they don't have much of a team, uh, it could be a blowout. Yeah, probably a big blowout is, is right. Uh, they're very undermanned is basically what they are, they don't have a lot of players, and uh, this is the type of game that, you know, you just don't want to mess up. You know, turnovers might happen because it is raining and things like that, but hopefully it'll happen more for the Cougars as opposed to the Muskies. They like the rain, right? They're a fish. <laughs> That's right. Now, Lakeland has a pretty good quarterback in Ryan Mayuri. Yes, they do, and they got a couple good backs, too. They got a kid by the name of Travis Lee, or Sean Lee, excuse me. He's had some big games the last couple of weeks, and Ryan Vandaloo from Sheboygan Falls, another senior, so they can run the ball, throw the ball, and, you know, we've seen Lakeland the last couple of years. They really have an explosive offense, and they're a lot of fun to watch. Well, this is going to be your last broadcast of the football season, Chris. Tell us what's going on next Saturday. Well, next week, and we talked to Dave Gannetti before. He said it is big next week. It's just huge. It'd be a chance to clinch the playoffs for the first time ever. Unfortunately, I'm taking a little trip to Nevada, uh, southern Nevada, where it's like 75 degrees. But uh, unfortunately, I won't be here to, to hopefully see that first thing. We've seen a lot of, you know, first year like when we've seen the, you know, the women's team. We've seen the basketball team make playoffs and things like that. And this is the first opportunity for the football team. You know, the baseball team they made to the College World Series, so there's been a lot of positive things out here at Lakeland College. A brand new athletic facility, not brand new athletic facility, but a new addition to the facility. Yeah, the new gym is going up, and you know the parking out here is real nice. And I've talked to you know a couple people, you know they heard that we're coming out here, and we talked. Have you seen Lakeland play and things like that? And you'd be amazed how many people come out and watch Lakeland. And today's not the nicest days to do it, but they've got a nice parking facility now, and as you said before, the new uh, gym, which we'll we'll see in the in the winter time. So it's really exciting out here at Lakeland, and more people should come out here to see this. Chris assured me that he's going to keep his mind on today's game, not on winning at Vegas next Saturday. With that, we're going to step out and we come back. We'll have the starting lineups and the kickoff for today for this afternoon's ball game. You've got to stay focused and not get distracted. The same is true on the road. So before your wireless phone becomes a distraction, take a time out for safety. In bad weather or traffic, call later, dial sensibly, and use a hands-free device. You know, your wireless phone can be your best safety tool. To call for help, stop a crime, however you use it, remember, with wireless, safety is your call. It starts in your own neighborhood. When you care enough to give your time to help someone still learning the way and getting involved in the needs of your community. Once you've helped bring a smile to someone's face and help brighten their day, you'll be hooked for life. 
the Major League Baseball Players Trust and Volunteers of America are teaming up to make a real difference in the lives of the people in our communities. Join a winning team. See what you can do to help. The Sean Yerkes. We're back at Lakeland College just looking at uh, some statistics for uh, Concordia and Lakeland. Uh, we mentioned that Concordia comes in 0-7 on the season. Uh, they do have a loss to Concordia of Mequon by a score of 60 to nothing. So they've been uh, challenged to score points. They only have 66 on the year. Uh, their leading rusher is Tony Fontana with uh, 598 yards. And their leading passer is uh, Craig Platt, who's hit on 82 of 178. So not even hitting 50% of the passing. Uh, Sean Yerkes is their leading receiver with 18 catches. Well, if uh, Concordia has any chance, they're going to have to control the ball, keep the ball out of the explosive uh, offense of the Muskies. Uh, I mean, that's when you're an underdog, that's one thing you got to do is somehow create turnovers. And get a break here and there, too. Yeah, on a rainy day. Maybe uh, look on the second page, Chris. I was just thinking about, uh, I mentioned Ryan Vandalou. I was thinking about him as being, a, I think I mentioned him on the offense, but he's their big time, one of their big time defensive players. And Ryan Vandalou and Nick Zeck and David Benton have all had outstanding seasons here. Uh, I men mentioned uh, Ryan Vandalou in the uh, pregame. He's from Sheboygan Falls and done an outstanding job on the defensive end. Lakeland will uh, take the opening kickoff. I think uh, Concordia actually won the toss but deferred to the second half. Uh, back deep for Lakeland is uh, MacArthur White, number one. And uh, number 46, Brandon Erdman, or is that uh, Vandaloo 45? It's hard to tell. Erdman. Yep, he's another back, one of the big backs at uh, Erdman, uh, Menominee, Michigan athlete. And uh, MacArthur White from Zion, Illinois. <laughs> Getting ready to kick off for uh, Concordia is Chris Teppen. High kick. Taken at the 10 by Erdman. And he's hit and dropped at about the 25 yard line. The first and 10 Lakeland. Lakeland comes into the game 5 and 2 overall, 4 and 0 oh in conference. Yeah, we'll talk a little bit about that. They opened the season up against uh, Northwestern College, not to be. Not Northwestern University, but Northwestern College. They beat them. And they had a couple losses, which we'll talk about in a minute. Myuri in the shotgun, rolling to the left. Quick pass out to uh, White, and he's got it. Out over the 30. Nice little safe pass in the rain to get things started here. Use White speed out there. Lakeland then played uh, at Carthage and lost a very close game in a game that we thought that they were going to uh, to win. Then they uh, played uh, UW Whitewater, who is currently leading their league. They beat Lacrosse in a tough game last week. Pick up a seven on the play. Inside handoff. Nope, Myori pulled it back out and kept it. He's got some room on the outside. Oh, we got around the defender on a good move. He's down inside Concordia territory before he's uh, pushed out of bounds by Anthony Gore, but uh, he put a good move on a defender coming up and uh, got around the corner, Chris. Yeah, Ryan's averaging 500 yards, or excuse me, has 518 yards on the ground already this year, and you know what? Not only did he fool you as he's coming right into your uh, screen there, but he, uh, he fooled uh, a lot of the uh, Concordia players as well. That was a great fake. Twenty-eight yard pickup for Mayuri makes it first and ten. Lakeland. Oh, pitch forward to uh, Barry. Aaron Barry on the uh, reception. Yep, that'd be like a shovel pass. Yep. And as we were saying, uh, <coughs> since that time, uh, Lakeland being one and two, they've they've pretty much run the table and a big win last week at Concordia of Mequon, which we said in the opening, seventeen to fourteen down there and. Basically, the playoffs are, are in sight. They just have to, you know, basically run the table. A lot of Sheboygan County teams in the playoffs for high school. Barry up the middle. Fumble. Fumble. Who's got it? 
Concordia of Illinois signals they have it, and so do the officials. So Barry on a good carry. Got the first down, but then he fumbled it away. Yeah, and he's coming off the field a little slow, Marty. Well, one thing I was afraid of was turnovers today, and you know, it is wet and foggy and cloudy and cold. Yeah, you see it Barry right up the middle, and it wasn't until the end of the play that he had dropped the ball. Ball spotted on the 32. It's a good thing. 10. I was going to say, it's a good thing I have my health because <laughs> the weather forecast or the weather out here isn't too good. Right up the middle. Carry made by uh, Jason Weeks, but uh, very little for him. Lakeland College uh, defense stiffens up. <clears throat> Give Weeks a gain of uh, two yards. Their quarterback is Craig Platt, number 14. <clears throat> Second down and they're calling it eight. It's a long eight. Man in motion. Platt fakes. Now he's being rushed hard, forced out of the pocket. Hit as he throws and it goes way out of bounds. Putting the pressure on him was uh, number 40. We don't have a name for that guy. John Wagner. John Wagner. So Platt's pass goes incomplete. It's gonna make it uh, third down. Nick Zek was on a pursuit two, number 75. Talked about him both in basketball and football. Has had an outstanding career here at Lakeland College. And he is a house. He's a man. Platt rolling, firing complete, but way short of the first down. Completion was to Travis Reeb. But, uh, very short gain, if any. Give him a gain of two, it's gonna be fourth down. Actually, they're spotting it right on the 35. That was only a gain of one, Chris. Well, Concordia is last in Offense with just about 10 points a game, and they're giving up close to 50. So, Eric Barrel is uh, back deep to receive this punt. On paper, or Lakeland. I was gonna say, on paper, it's all a mismatch, but you just well, yeah, never know. Gotta play the game. Mm -hmm. Well, Lakeland had the offense moving on their first possession, a fumble, a uh, stall at. Kick is away. Takes it at the uh, 26, and then he uh, goes down. So Lakeland will have their second possession of the game. Again, this uh, is an important game. It's a precursor to next week's uh, big game where they will be uh, hopefully playing for the playoffs. Yep, Lakeland's 4-0 in conference. Aurora is 3-1, Concordia 3-1, so Concordia can uh, defeat Greenville. Nah, then uh, basically they'll be playing for a playoff berth. Mayuri, you're in. Mayuri under, under center this time, throws it out to White. He's got a little bit of running room, gets it out over the 35. Nice block out here by Eric Royal. Number 10, freeing up White. Ball's going to be spotted on the... Uh, 36 yard line. Pick up a nine on that play. Up the middle, another fumble, and Concordia has it. Well, I on the you. carry was number 35, Travis Jervis, and he uh, fumbled it away. Here you'll see it. Again, it just looped out of there and I'll tell you what Concordia at this early stage at least doesn't care about the records it's gonna say first and ten for Concordia and the 
by recovering these fumbles, they're starting to gain pretty good field position. Right <laughs> now, they're inside the uh, 45 at the 44. It's not a good thing, Coach. First and 10 for Concordia. They didn't do anything in their first possession. Lakeland blitzing on the play. A little reverse, and then a halfback option pass goes through the arms of the intended receiver, Dan Meyer, incomplete. But a little razzle-dazzle trying to get something on the board there. And it very easily could have worked there. Great, great call by uh, Concordia. Here you'll see it. The tail end pass just out of the outstretched arms. You know, had he uh, gotten turned around in the right direction right away, he might have caught that ball. Second and 10. Handoff inside to uh, Reeb, or pardon me, Jason Weeks. Weeks gets it down to the 40 yard line of Lakeland. All at the 40, want to pick up a three yards for weeks, makes it third down and seven. Mr. Retzak running the clock, doing a fine job. He's dry. <laughs> so are we. <laughs> Platt back, fires an out. That was way short of the intended receiver and uh, almost picked off. Who was that number 40? You mentioned him before. Uh, Wagner. John Wagner. John Wagner, number 40. Gosh, the guy's a starter. Yep. He doesn't even have his number in the program. Yeah, a lot of times we see uh, Tom out in the stripes. Today he would prefer, he prefers being in here with us, except he forgot the space heater. Yeah, he's always forgetting something. <laughs> And a good play by Lakeland to let it bounce, but uh, Concordia gets a great bounce, and it's going to be at inside the five-yard line at about the four or the three-yard line. Smart play by the receiver to let it bounce. He just didn't get any cooperation from the ball. No, and with the wet ground, it's just going to die out there. And that's basically what it did. You're not going to get much of a roll. Once it hits, it just kind of goes splat. Well, let's see if they can put something together here, Marty. Yeah, where are they spotting the ball? At the three? Three-yard line, first and 10 Lakeland. Boy, they can't afford any fumbles now. Inside handoff to uh, Erdman, I think that is. Brandon Erdman picks up a nice chunky yardage to get Lakeland somewhat out of the hole anyway. Yeah, Erdman comes in at uh, about 53 yards for a game. Good speed showing out there. Picked up a little bit of a block from uh, Eric Royal. I, mean, I think you mentioned his name earlier, Chris. Yep. Couple. Ball spotted on the 27 yard line. Like to Erdman see had a 24 yard carry. Yeah, I like to see those wide receivers block out there. Man in motion for Lakeland. Mayuri straight back, fires up over the middle to White. And it's uh, incomplete, almost picked off. Wow, good good job there of trying to fool, fool the officials, Nick George there, but I hate to tell you, son, you weren't even close. That was uh, Myeri's first incompletion of the game. Second down and 10. <clears throat> Thing with Lakeland and their offense coach is uh, they're very explosive. A good speed on the on the outside and uh, running backs that hit the hole very quick. Ooh, a pretty good defense there, and Erdman not able to get started. Actually, hit in the backfield. Concordia only has like eight seniors, Marty. They are really young, and uh, there's not a lot of them. I'll tell you that there. There's not a lot of. White jerseys over on that sideline over there. No gain on that last play by Erdman. Third down and 10. 
Mayuri keeps it. Oh boy. He's gonna get a first down. He's got a lot of room to run. He's up over the 50 and knocked out of bounds near the 40 yard line. Well, he dropped back and saw a big opening and he just took it right now. And a great decision by Ryan. Yeah, there was nobody over there, Marty. Not any white jerseys. Again, great fooling uh, of the defensive players there because yes. there's got to be somebody home over there. I really. 36 yard pickup that time. Whoa. Clock stopped here for some reason. Uh, Maybe to set the chains on the other side of the field. Now we're set to go. Hey, they were set. First and 10 Lakeland at the 37 of Concordia. In motion is Barrel. Mayuri straight back, good protection. Middle screen to Erdman. He's got it at the 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, five. Touchdown, Lakeland College. Middle screen, Concordia not ready for that. Exactly, Marty, they weren't ready at all. Over pursuit by the line. Created a big hole there. Well, they read the aggressiveness quite well and uh, played right to it with that middle screen. 37 yard touchdown pass. You're gonna get a look at it. Look at him come in hard. Whoops. Yeah. And that big guy wasn't gonna catch uh, Erdman. And a good piece of running after the catch. Kick is up and good by Dale Lukeski. Check that, no good. Hit right on the pole with 9.22 remaining in the first quarter. Lakeland on top, six to nothing. Is coming. There's no escape from the day you retire. And will you be ready financially? Are you ready, dear? You still can be with investments like an IRA or a retirement plan at work. It's never too late. But start now, because if you wait... You're making a grave mistake. You may wind up working forever. <laughs> Saving for your financial future doesn't have to be a nightmare. Choose to save. Lakeland College getting ready to kick off. 97-yard drive. Yeah, I was just going to say a 97-yard drive and one, two, three, four, only five plays. Doing the kicking is uh, Dennis Landry. Not very deep. Does get a bit of a bounce. It's picked up at about the 12. And then uh, being hit and dropped, Chris Teppen was tackled by uh, Billy Hughes. No, Billy Hughes was the uh, kicker. He was the kicker. Okay. They got two 14s in your program, but it's Billy Hughes is your kicker. He's also a quarterback. He's from Florida. I wonder if he likes this. Yeah. Probably this weekend, it's <laughs> a lot better than being in Florida. Yeah, if he came up here from Florida, I don't think he's in pre-med. <laughs> <laughs> Right up the middle, but Stonewalled was the uh, Concordia ball carrier. That was uh, Teppen, number six. Well, his high school is Nature Coast Tech. Be interested to hear about what kind of school Nature Coast Tech is. Hmm. Loss of a yard on the play, Chris. I wonder if it's a specialized school of sorts or who knows. They're all special. <laughs> we wouldn't want to make anybody feel bad by saying their high school wasn't special. <laughs> oh, I don't think they uh, were set at the line. It's going to be illegal procedure on Concordia. Let's see what they come up with. I'll start. Did you do the tumble roll? Yep. I'll 
Second down and 16. Platt back, looking, he's oh. rushed hard and drilled by two Muskies. Wagner and number 97, we don't have him in a program either. What's going on? <laughs> see in this other one? Nope. You're gonna see him coming from uh, up the middle and the left side. Who's 97? David Benton. All right. Bent in 96 on the sack. And Platt uh, is walking off the field, Chris, uh, with assistance by the trainers. Yeah, David Benton's had an outstanding season out here as well, and wow, that was just a huge rush. Platt had no chance whatsoever. Third down and 26. There's Weeks now, the guy who threw that uh, little pass before at uh, Lakeland blitzing again. And Weeks uh, gets drilled hard, picked up some yardage, but not much. Wagner again on the hit, he's been in a lot of plays. Yeah, I was saying Jason Weeks is the kid that ran that uh, receiver uh, flip pass or whatever. He, Cordy's gonna punt again. Oh boy. Well, back deep for Lakeland again is Eric Barrel. I thought he made a good decision on the last one. They just didn't get the friendly bounce. Let's see what happens uh, this time. Lakeland looks like they're gonna be rushing 10. Uh, one guy drops back. Kick think, is away. I think Lakeland was offside, Marty. Barrel takes it and is does finally get it. He dropped it and then uh, just picked it up on his knees, so he was down at about the 30, 31 yard line. Let's see what the penalty's all about, however. Offside Lakeland. Uh, Offside. Offside's on Lakeland. I would be curious here to see what they're gonna do. That's a pretty good punt, Marty. And they are gonna decline it. Yep, just uh, take the ball, you got possession. Yep. It's a good, good decision by uh, Lakeland. Lakeland has it again, first and 10. What are we calling it, Tom, the 31? Ball is just off the 30 yard line. You see coach talking to the troops. Well, he can't be too unhappy with the defensive play. They've uh, been uh, swarming to the ball. First and 10, Lakeland, they have it on the 31 yard line. Second back through is Erdman, and he gets up over the 50 yard line. Brandon Erdman on a great uh, run right up the middle. Second back through, you're gonna see it, got a good block up front, a couple of them. Good thing. And it runs right through a tackle. Yeah, it's a good thing there's a safety back there. That was his job, Nick George, because that was the only person that stood in the way from the end zone. Right over midfield there. Ball on the 50, pick up a 19 yards. You're gashing him. White in motion. Mayuri down the middle, he's got a receiver barrel. It's off of his hands, picked off by Concordia. Making the interception was uh, Milton Moses. And Concordia's gonna have it right back. Third turnover of the quarter by Lakeland. Well. I don't want to say what's going to necessarily happen. You shouldn't take things for granted. I'm sure Lakeland's going to win this football game, but I'll tell you what, you can't be pleased with the turnovers and the situation that's taken place here in the first quarter. We have 628 left in the first quarter, and you already got three turnovers. I mean, you still want to look sharp. Exactly. And uh, you are right there. You know, it's... You know, it's one thing to do this against Concordia, but when you're playing the, the heavyweights, that comes back to haunt you. 
right up the middle for Concordia. Still in at quarterback is uh, Jason Weeks. So Platt still on the sideline. Hopefully he's okay. Somebody should just explain to him that it's just cloudy out, not really, it's not in your head. Bishop number eight on the carry. There he is. Ball's going to be spotted right at the 40-yard uh, line. Pick up a four yards. Second and six. Lakeland coming right through and a fumble. Concordia gets it back, but I'll tell you, they shot the gap and uh, Weeks never had a chance. I want to see that one again. That looks <laughs> pretty much like it was offside. I'll tell you, the timing was right there. Oh yeah, it was good. Good timing is right. Ryan Vandaloo right there. I think it was. Ball is going to be spotted at a, at the 35. So a loss of five on the play. Ryan Vandaloo got some uh, big pub I know last year as well. I want to say district, comp, you know, district player or comp, something like that. He had an outstanding season a year ago as well. Weeks pass is uh, caught, but oh. short of the first down and then dropped. They're gonna call it incomplete. I think that went right through the hands of a musky defender into the hands see, of a can... cougar and then dropped. Whoop, and then dropped. Yeah, number 21 for Lakeland, Jeremy Sissel. Couldn't quite make the catch. There's a couple of dry musky fans. Oop, whistles. This is on Lakeland. It'll give, uh, well, it won't give Concordia first down. No. Ball start. Concordia. Another five yard penalty on Concordia. Kick is away by uh, Teppen. He can Bayroll still hasn't caught one and he kneels down and he gets hammered and that's gonna be a penalty. <laughs> Albert Monterubio has gotta know a little better. <laughs> when your knee is down, you're down. You don't need to kill him after he's already down. But uh, Bayroll. Here's a replay. First of all, get herself up and <laughs> <laughs> <Jeez>. Take that. <laughs> Maybe next time you'll catch the ball. Jeez. Well, I don't know. That, I understand that took a while, but all of a sudden he gets up and runs and you slow up. I don't uh, know. That's, he had plenty of time. It <laughs> just, was, it was a good I'm doing call. whatever I can to help him. <laughs> hey, if he'd catch the ball, it never would have happened. That's, hopefully that, uh, that's twice in a row now. Hopefully Eric is okay. And off to Erdman. And he slithers through over the 45 to about the 46 or 47. But uh, that time uh, Concordia played a little better defense. Second down for uh, Lakeland. White in motion. On a stretch play, Erdman blasts through. He's got the first down inside Concordia territory. Good strong run there. Well, that offensive line is doing a nice job. We haven't mentioned them. We'll try to mention who those young men are, but they're creating some big holes for uh, the musky running backs. We're uh, Approaching right now, four minutes left in the first quarter. Myuri hands it off to Erdman, trying to swing wide. But uh, good read that time by Concordia, and they stop him for a uh, short gain. Maybe a pickup of uh, two yards at the most. Brian Vandalin and Ryan Homer, your tackles. They're number 69. and. 
77. Holm is just a junior from <coughs> Michigan. Vandalin, a senior from Monroe, 300 pounder. Mike Christian, wide out, and they got three wide outs to the other side. That's the left side. Erdman, the lone setback. In motion is Barrel. Mayuri straight back, little cut into Christian. And he's hit and dropped, but not until Lakeland gets the first down. So they had all the action over on the left side with the th three wide receivers, put one in motion. And then they hit Christian on a little slant on the right side. Well, you see him, 82. Again, Concordia just over pursues. They did a little nicer job that time, but uh, I think that little play is going to be available all day. First down and 10, ball spotted on the 34-yard line. That was a 10-yard pickup, Chris. Again, white in motion. Christian the wide out on the right side. Mayuri keeps it. He got a little bit of a chip block. He's still on his feet inside the 10 before he's dragged down near the five yard line. Yeah, Ryan Holm getting a block down there, big number 77. Your guards are Brian Eater. We've talked about him the last couple of years. He's a senior, he's from Random Lake. It's gonna be first and goal. Ball's gonna be spotted at about the six yard line, Chris. Yeah, your other guard is Joseph Pohl. He's number 59. 28 yard pickup again. Erdman, second back through, pounds through, drags a tackler into the end zone, touchdown. Good hard running. Check that, not Erdman, but Travis Jervis. His second touchdown on the year, Marty. Jervis. Russian. Yep. I think we're going to see a lot of different ball carriers and runners today and receivers. Well, we usually do anyway. Yeah. But uh, that kick is up and good. And with the 231 remaining in the first quarter, Lakeland on top, 13 to nothing. Breakthrough Machine gave us insight into the bones, as another did for the heart, and another for the brain. Now doctors are using a new machine to practice medicine and save lives. The difference is, it's one you can use too. When you log on to MedlinePlus.gov from the National Library of Medicine and the National Institutes of Health, you're tapping into the largest, most comprehensive medical website in the world. MedlinePlus.gov, the website doctors prescribe. Great shot by Brian Andrews, working the field camera. Up on top is uh, Jackie Kramer. I got that answer. Oh, that'd be uh, David Craig. Yeah, because he went to the now defunct Milton College. Yep. Played for Seattle for a number of years. He didn't get us that time, Andy. Billy Hughes kicking off. Boot carries down to the 15 yard line. Spin move made by uh, Meyer, but then he's pushed back. Ooh, and he gets knocked in the head. You know what he's saying is why don't they call a personal ball on that <laughs> after the play? Be first and 10 Lakeland ball spotted on the 30 yard line. Cordy, you got a first down yet? No, yay, no, yes, no, nope. <laughs> they did have a, I hope I just didn't jinx them or something here. <laughs> yeah, really. Lakeland looking to blitz. I'll tell you, Concordia's had trouble with the blitz. Well, they got eight guys in the Platt box. Platt back in the game, and uh, Wagner is the first one to hit them. <laughs> back at about the 21, or maybe they're gonna spot it at the 25. If this, is what I, if this is what I came back out here for. Forget that. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Let's have a new option. You're like, oh, see, I'm not feeling so good again. <laughs> Second down and 15. The answer, David Craig, Milton College. No longer exists, Milton College. 
Can I still get my transcripts, so? <laughs> I'm going for a job. Can I still get my transcripts? Second down and 15, loss of five. And uh, hit in the backfield, but uh, falling forward was the uh, Concordia running back. Weeks on the carry that time. I like that setup by Concordia a little bit better because they spread them out a little bit. Lakeland's got so many guys up in the box and they're more tight like that. It just really makes the uh, defense pressure so much more. So if Concordia has any chance against this ferocious Lakeland Rush. defense and yeah. rush, you got to spread them out like they did there. Third down and 14. Lakeland coming hard again. Platt fires incomplete. His receiver, uh, Travis Reeb, didn't even have a chance at that one, Chris. And who else but Ryan Vandaloo hot on pursuit of Platt, making him throw that ball away too early. And once again, they're going to punt. Cordy has uh, hit on one of six passes so far. Well, Marty, with your sheets running out here, you got just 50 seconds in the quarter. I know. We're at hopefully, the hopefully. There's a high punt. Bayroll signals fair catch and can't catch that one. And now he gets it back at about the 20 yard line. Well, and you 30 know yard line. And you me. know what happened that time is that uh, because of the penalty before, you know, there was. Albert decided not to just run in there and clobber anybody. You know, if he was a little bit closer, he may have got that, but you still can't be in a, you know, what is it, the yeah, circle? The or circle, the, the halo. The halo or whatever to protect him. First and 10, Lakeland ball on the 30. 43 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Lakeland on top, 13 to nothing. He had a 37 yard pass play and a Six yard run. Here we go again. Myuri, he's got a blocker in front. Boom! Good block, and then he's punched out of bounds at about the 44 yard line. Yeah, Eater out here leading the way. It's a 14 yard pickup by Myuri. You know, every time he's carried the ball, Chris, it's been a double digit gain. 78 having a good time picking yeah. on those little people. Brian Edder. Edder. First and 10, Lakeland. Eater. Myuri back, rolling, rolling. He's going to keep it. And he's out of bounds. I don't know what's going wrong with uh, Ryan Myuri. He didn't even get 10 yards at carry. What, he get nine and three quarters? I don't know. He had 28, 36, 28, 14. And... Nine and three quarters? Yeah, nine yarder only. <laughs> All right. He has, he has five carries for 114 yards. I'll see what I have him for. <laughs> <laughs> we, got the, we got the computer people over here. They're advanced. Right through the midi middle is Erdman, and he's going to be down at the 40. They might stop the clock to... Uh, Shift the change, chains. And that should be it, Marty. Ball right on the 40 yard line. Pick up a seven yards. Wow, I'm surprised they're gonna run one more here, Marty. Just run it, don't pass it. Yeah. Running, out of, running out of space. Who he's gonna pass? Of course. No, he's going to keep it. And staying in bounds, Mayuri slips by one, two tackles, and then he's hit down at the 26-yard uh, line. And that is the end of the first quarter with Lakeland on the move and on top, 13 to nothing.
Wisconsin. Life's so good. Call 1-800-432-TRIP or visit TravelWisconsin.com. Research Foundation. Back at Lakeland College, and uh, it's been all Lakeland in the first quarter. They have uh, 12 first downs to none for Concordia, and 211 yards to a minus three. That's just on the ground, 278 total to minus two. I mean, come, oh boy. And uh, leading all rushers is uh, Ryan Myrie, 128 yards. That pace, they're gonna have a thousand yards of offense. And uh, Cordy is going to be minus, what, eight? Gosh. Erdman off left tackle, slips by one tackler, another tackler, dragging people into the end zone. He's got a touchdown. 26 yard touchdown run <laughs> by Brandon Erdman. <laughs> Holy cow. Well, we knew uh, it was just a matter of time. Yeah, and you know, I I don't think I'm incorrect in saying this, but uh, Concordia doesn't look like they want to be out here anymore. Uh, not now. In to kick the extra point and slipping on his butt. And it got over the crossbar. Dan DeLucci got that kick to go. <laughs> he slipped and fell, but... Uh, had the good fortune to get the ball over the crossbar. With 14.52 remaining until halftime, Lakeland on top, 20 to nothing. For me, it's giving the best of myself. For me, it's the professional team environment and the mutual respect that I share with my colleagues. For me, it's providing my patients with the best and safest care possible. For me, it's having the latest in healthcare technologies and the privilege of providing the best healthcare to America's veterans. We are the nurses of VA. VACareers.com, a career in caring. The pain train, Lakeland College Muskies. I'll tell you, this is a, not only a big game for Lakeland, this is a big game for TV8. A win today puts us at 500, and then a win next week would uh, put us uh, over the 500 mark. So yep. This is important. I don't think uh, Rora is going to be as much of a pushover as uh, Concordia, I'll tell you. But uh, yeah, setting the table. I think you're right. Use uh, a spiral kind of a kick. Picked up on the 20-yard line. On the return was uh, Andrew Johnson. He got it out to uh, about the 30 or 31. First and 10. Ball is going to be down at the 31 or 32 yard line. Mr. Retzak has it the 31. So I will too. Don't change it now, Tom. That's now Lakeland just great pursuit and uh, good push on the front. And uh, that running back, Keith Bishop, just had no chance off right tackle. And he lost a yard. Yeah, it was a nice picture by Brian before the offensive linemen all sitting together, doing all the work. Ball is just off the 30. We're going to call it uh, the 30 yard line. It's second down and 11. Quick pass from Platt to. Uh, Sean Yerkes goes incomplete. They had him, just couldn't quite get the catch. No, still trying to gain some positive yards. Still negative for the ball game. And still no first downs. No, minus, uh, minus three yards on offense through a quarter. 
plus a little bit here. Platt ducks under center, barking out the signals. Lakeland blitzed, and then uh, the snap didn't happen, so uh, Vandaloo had to retreat, but he slipped and was offside. That's one way to gain some positive yardage, have the other team commit some penalties. Remains third down, but now it's going to be third and six. You know, Lakeland had a terrible loss at UW-Whitewater, but uh, you know, that's a whole different uh, level of football yep. that uh, Wisconsin State League co Conference. Yeah, Whitewater's in the top ten. In the nation. Yeah, yeah in the nation. Deep pass by Platt, and it's incomplete. Intended receiver was uh, Travis Reeb, and uh, he actually had to break the pass up, almost making the interception was Dan Crocker. And Dan's from St. Joe's. So it's going to be fourth down. Concordia uh, not able to uh, move the ball at all, and uh, they've really been having trouble with uh, pressure. Christian is uh, back, but a uh, real poor punt by Concordia. Chris Teppen kind of missed it, and uh, we had a new receiver back there for uh, Lakeland, uh, Mike Christian. Uh, coach is uh, not pleased with uh, Eric Barrell's performance on his punt returns. No, and there's been a, again, I know they're up 21 to zip, or 20 to zip, and just a lot of, that's those little things. Yeah, little mistakes here and there that uh, hey, you'd like to clean up a little we bit. We were just on TV. We look cloudy too. Oh, Brian sneaking up on us again. Quick pass out to White. He's got it. He by one tackler and is finally knocked down. Good stop made by number 19, Nick George. Well, he's the player of the game so far for Concordia. Unfortunately, he's the Always the last man on the defense stopping him. Here you see the replay and watch number 19 with the messiest jersey on the entire Concordia team as well. And when your uh, safeties are making all the plays, you know you're in a lot of trouble. Ball spotted on the 38 yard line. Fake handoff. Mayuri almost tripped and fell, got his spot back or his feet back underneath him threw the pass down the middle to uh, Eric Royal but then Royal slipped and couldn't make the catch <laughs> yeah so it's a lot of slippage out there second down at 10 for Lakeland This is what the eighth pass attempt for uh, Concordia. Most of them have been real short. For Lakeland, you mean? Or Lakeland, I'm sorry. Mayuri uh, is tripped up by uh, S Steve Mollock. So very short gain that time. It's going to be third down. Give uh, Mayuri a two-yard pickup on the play. Boy, oh boy. Keeps getting less and less yards. I know. Getting tired. Trying to get a new QB in there. Sure, we'll see some different ones in the second half here. Still want to get, you know, you still got to play a little bit, especially in the first half, get your guys. Hey, we got a first timer ready. up on, on the top camera, Chris. Jackie Kramer, student out at UWS. Myuri looking, looking. Now he rolls out to the right. He's going to tuck it under and run. Now he's getting up there and out of bounds, untouched. Inside the 25 yard line. There she is. There's Jackie. She's having fun. How's it up there, Jackie? <laughs> Staying dry? Here you'll see uh, Ryan. 
This time I thought Concordia did a better job here. Number 73, Brandon uh, Everson was stayed home, but the only problem was is he's not as quick as Ryan is. <laughs> when he came his way, he went right by him. 13 yard pickup by Mayuri that time. Erdman deep in the backfield, takes the handoff, off left tackle, but he's uh, tripped off his feet by uh, David Susanajara. So not much of a gain that time. It's gonna be second down and about seven. Ball on the 20 yard line. A lot of wide receivers this time, Chris. Two to the left, two to the right. Erdman, the only back with uh, on the pass, is right in the bread basket of Rodney Ellison, and uh, he dropped it. Wow. Got to catch that ball. Yeah, and I think he was going to run before he caught it, Marty. I can relate to that. Coming out in the receiver spot is John Gilmore, number 81. He and uh, Royal and White are all on the right side. Mayuri fakes a handoff, rolling out. He's got some running room. Avoids, no, he doesn't avoid that one tackler. Good stop made by a Chris Teppen at about the 11 yard line. Well, Concordia's getting a little better at out of control the situation, but uh, still not making the plays. First and 10, Lakeland. And the ball is gonna be spotted on the 11, 11 yard line, I believe. Uh-oh, officials are having a discussion. I think they're gonna come over to the TV8 crew and ask for a replay. There you see Dave Gallianetti. <laughs> he, he looks mystified. Dave in his uh, Heisman Trophy pose. <laughs> got it, got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. Oh, you know what it was? Mr. Tom Retzak paying attention to the announcers instead of the clock. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, all we want. We don't want excuses. We want performance. <laughs> <laughs> this is going throughout Sheboygan County. Oh, well, maybe just the city. <laughs> Mayuri gives it off to uh, Jervis for a short gain. That was a nice shot there by Brian Andrews. It was. I thought his best shot was a Jackie up on top. <laughs> <laughs> she looked pretty cold up there. <laughs> Pick up of three yards. Makes it second down on the eight yard line. Mayuri looking over the middle. He's got his receiver. Touchdown. That catch was made by John Gilmore. There you see it, right over the middle, Gilmore broke open. No one really close to him, Chris, boy oh boy. That time, uh, the player of the game for Concordia, Nick George, lost track of who he was covering, and uh, because of it, Lakeland got in there and now leads 27, tw excuse me, 26 to zip. Let's see if uh, Lucchesi can uh, stay on his feet, or is it Lucchesi? He does, and it's still good. He can kick whether he's standing up or falling down. But with 10.40 remaining until halftime, Lakeland on top, 27 to nothing. And uh, we're gonna have to break out some new jokes. <laughs> Do you know how many kids are risking their health by eating unhealthy foods, stuffing themselves, and not getting any exercise? Thank goodness. You got here just in time. Where's the problem? In there. Hey, what's going on? What are you doing? Here, try this. 
the original fast food. Doctors know that our children need a diet rich in fruits, vegetables, high-fiber vegetarian foods to help them grow up healthy. Call for a free booklet or visit kidsgethealthy.org. There's one of the younger Lakeland fans. I think he's a hunting <laughs> fan, too. He's got his blaze orange on. He doesn't look too happy. Uh, I thought, a hot dog. I thought he was going to... I didn't think we had to take a bath today. Kick is going to be taken by Concordia at about the five-yard line. Paul Horning. Gets by one tackle and then he's hitting. No, that's Travis Reeb, pardon me. <laughs> you know what, this cloud and stuff, it does kind of look like some of those highlights you see of yeah. Lane running around side off the uh, the old Packers sweep. Here you see the replay. He runs a little bit like Horning, except when he got hit. Ball's gonna be spotted on the 32 yard line. And uh, what are we going to have here, Chris? I don't think Lakeland was offside, but they were bouncing, ready to yes. move. They're going to call motion, I think, on uh, yeah. Concordia. Well, you know, when you have that happen, I mean, the Lakeland rush, and, you know, they're having trouble stopping the blitz and all that kind of stuff, that plays into your head a little bit. Well, Concordia still is in negative yards on offense, yet to convert a first down. And uh, they've just been having a tough go of it. Wide out to the right side is uh, Dan Meyer. Fake to the second back through, and then a little bit of a screen play. And uh, Platt's pass to uh, Bishop is complete. And uh, that was a nice play. Yep, that's the type of stuff that Concordia has to do. They got to slow down the rush somehow. Yep, so more screen passes, but hopefully good chance for Lakeland to work on this too. Five yard pickup. Ball at the uh, original line of scrimmage. No, that was a 10 yard pickup, my bad. You see big. Ryan Holm, the 320, 6'5", 3'20", junior, trying to get his shoes. And they're going to be close. Oh, Weeks oh. on the carry. Going to take away a statement now. I can no longer say they don't have a first down. And they give it to him. 10, 15 in the second quarter. They get their first first down and now are probably in the plus. Maybe not. Ball is at the 43-yard line. Pick up a six by uh, Weeks. Platt being rushed heavily, throws the ball out of bounds, and a great catch made on the sideline by Derek Adamzak, freshman from Crown Point, Indiana. Kind of lost his way to Bloomington, ended up at Lakeland. <laughs> You know what I like about you best, Chris? You laugh at my stupid jokes. <laughs> well, I had a good time on Thursday night, despite the outcome of the score. That was fun with the helicopter at North High School. and uh, Yeah, that was pretty outstanding. And uh, you had some good lines that night, too. Platt back. Ooh, Ooh. catches up a nice block. Now he's got some time, but still can't find a receiver. And that pass, again, is completed on the sideline. To, by Sean Lee. However, it won't count. Well, at that, with that catch right there by Lee, Platt has now hit as many Lakeland receivers as he has his receivers. <laughs> For those of you scoring at home. <laughs> yeah, really. And that wouldn't, never mind, never mind, never mind, never mind. <clears throat> 
it'll lead me to another subject, Marty. I'll have to ask you in a second. Platt straight back. And he threw a little screen pass right in the bread basket of the receiver and he dropped the ball. And uh, that receiver is not getting up. Lost his hat. Well, hopefully he's gonna be okay. I'm gonna ask him, Marty, uh, can a Cub fan cheer for uh, the White Sox? Uh, I definitely am. I was uh, talking to Terry Berkovitz at the old timers meeting and he said, you know, if you uh, wear White Sox stuff to a Cub game, you're asking for big trouble, whether it's in the park or outside the park. Well, I remember when they were, uh, some of the Chicago radio stations and things were, they were basically saying things such as, uh, <laughs> Some wet Lakeland fans. <laughs> <laughs> they were saying basically that uh, all Cub fans are not allowed. It, you know, yeah, I Comiskey know. Park. Yeah, it's a bunch of baloney. They don't want anything to do with them going into that stadium, which, by the way, I've been to uh, about 26 Major League ballparks. I would have to say that that park right there is right up there is one of the worst. Really? Yep. Wow. I would have to say. I know it. that if you get up in the upper deck, oh. it's uh, very steep. Yeah. It's uh, uncomfortably steep, actually. Yep. Uh, the Metrodome is the worst, but that place is bad. Christian has it on the 20, 25, and Ooh. hit and dropped at the 28. Nice tackle there by yeah. Mahalik. Mike Christian on the return. 9.31 remaining in the first half. Lakeland on top, 27 to nothing. Uh, the crew today is uh, Kerry Coutzer spinning the dials in the truck. He's got his space heater on, I'm sure. Yeah, and he's assisted by Andy McKillop. Brian Andrews on the field camera. Jackie Kramer up on top. And uh, my partner, Chris Wright, and I'm Mike Martin. Why do we, the game. Why do we always give these new people the worst job going up on top? Because they're new. <laughs> they don't know any better. <laughs> Another one of those shovel passes. Yeah, that one goes uh, my area to Erdman. Short gain, be second down. Well, Concordia at times has looked a little bit better on defense. They're still giving up too much, but uh, you know, I think you mentioned earlier, do they want to be here? I don't know, but they're still going a little bit here, but there's still a lot of time left in this ball game, Marty. Oh yeah. Marty, handoff to uh, Erdman, he gets it out to the 40 before he's hit and dropped. He's got the first down. He's got, he's got a lot of grass on him. Yep. On his arms, on his helmet, on his jersey. I don't like that though. You know, we need to uh, at some point, Chris, talk a little bit about this uh, playoff business and not being able to broadcast and I know the the station got some uh, emails and calls already you know about that my Aries pass is complete that was to uh, number 81 John Gilmore again but I think uh, some of our fans uh, for some reason or other you know don't quite understand about the uh, situation yeah, as we mentioned. We'll try to clear it up. Yeah, Thursday for some of the hairs. No, she doesn't look cold or anything. She, oh, she's even got a smile on her face. Yeah. Of course, she does have her gloves on. Myuri hit as he throws. It's complete wow. to White. Then he makes a great catch, and he's in for another Lakeland touchdown. And Myuri, back at the 50-yard line, does get up, but he got hit hard as he released the ball. Nice play. 43-yard touchdown pass. I think that's my Uri to White. Yeah, I was gonna say. I think that's White's fourth touchdown on the season, and that was pretty. Just basically ran a. Here you're gonna post. see it. Watch him get hit as he throws. Boom! Right between two defenders. Yep. Very well placed there. Snap. Is down, the kick, not hit very well, but he does get it over the crossbar, so the pad is good. With 
8.09 remaining in the first half. Lakeland on top, 34 to nothing. Guys, what do you got? You got a 28 year old black male, got three gunshot wounds in the chest. One upper chest, one lower chest, one center. Bleeding a lot. We're there are two paths a child can take. Sir, try not to move. Still. We have a 28 year old male. For over 25 years, we've been helping children choose the right one. Communities and schools, helping kids stay in school and prepare for life. This. Got some recent stats, Chris? Yeah. Doesn't look so good for Concordia, does it? Nope. Not at all. Looks good for Lakeland, though. Two of 10 passing for uh, Concordia and 10 14 for uh, Lakeland and 272 yards on the ground for Lakeland, just 27 for uh, Concordia. Oh, check that, three yards. Three yards for uh, Concordia. Ball taken on the 13 and returned out over the 25, near the 30, before uh, Dan Meyer was knocked down. Yeah, for those of you that uh, don't know what we're talking about, the WIA basically has made a deal to uh, sell their playoff rights. And so all TV stations throughout the state now have to uh, basically go, go through. Yeah. Go ahead. When we were young. Yeah. And uh, you have to pay for them. And basically, they, have, they own all your rights. Platt rolling, we get a flag. And then the pass is caught, but out of bounds. The catch was made by Bishop, but uh, he made the grab out of bounds. Now let's check out the flag. I think we're gonna get holding. Yes, we are on Concordia. See if they decline the penalty. Uh, but anyways, you just, Again, a couple of things that we're finding out too is it's not the TV station's fault. We can, we could broadcast it, but we basically have no rights if they want to change the announcers. Or uh, I was under talking to Carrie and um, basically Andy, and they're saying things like you can't, you know, be a homer, which basically what we are. We uh, support the Sheboygan schools or Sheboygan Falls or Lakeland College, uh, which I don't think would be a big problem. But you can't basically criticize the officiating and if they don't like any of the broadcasts they can edit it and you know put in their right. own thing there's just a whole bunch of different things that they can do Platts uh, again rolling away from pressure by Lakeland has to throw it away and uh, make it just uh, make him now two for 12 throwing but it's just a sad sad situation because it basically you takes know, the away other from thing the kids. is uh, there's an organization of all the stations throughout the state that uh, you know basically revolve around public uh, education and uh, you know information. Smaller stations like TV8 and uh, their organization uh, voted to uh, not do the broadcasts, or they didn't vote. They suggested that you not do the broadcast right. because of the you know the way it's being handled. And uh, doesn't seem like the WIA went under some very good advisement. Right. And. Uh Another reception for Lakeland on the sidelines. But uh, right now, it's a, to make a long story short, we will not be doing any playoffs for football or basketball and baseball, well, any sport. Right, right and we man. talked about that on Thursday. And for us, it's, it's very sad because we do it for the kids, and I enjoy doing it. And hopefully, something can be changed. Or It's a 10 year contract for right now, but. <laughs> the other thing is, too, is... It could be changed right, if there, enough people... The city also, I don't think we mentioned this the other day, can't, can't, we could broadcast it, but they are under... Uh, they could be fined up to $5,000, and the city would have to take that risk, and right now they don't want to take that risk. Oop, hit in the backfield and dropped hard. Was the ball carry by number 75, Nick Zeck. Zeck having some fun on that sack. Yeah take down so uh i don't know what the best i don't know how to i guess maybe in the second half we can tell you some people maybe you can contact or um 
Maybe the WIA would be the first place to start. But uh, well, I think, because I don't think uh, their decision was uh, very good. And again, it's 10 years right now, and maybe there could be some changes. I I would be surprised if, the, if we don't do anything for the next 10 years. That, that would be unfortunate. And then you come to think that uh, maybe after that, they're going to start taking away the regular season too? You know, would that be the next decision? Yep. Everything gets funneled through when we were young productions. Right. And that would uh, be unfortunate. Mike Christian got that one again, so he's two for two on those punt return catches. So, uh, I don't know. You Hopefully there'll be some, I think, did somebody say there was something in the Journal Sentinel about this as well? I think uh, there was something in maybe uh, Thursday or Friday's paper about uh, what position the public stations were going to take on that issue. And theirs was to uh, suggest that none of the uh, organization, stations that are in the organization accept the when we were young pro proposal, you know, to right. pay them and to keep the rights of the broadcasts. Right. And, uh, you know, uh, Kerry made a very good point. We, this is basically a non-profit organization. I mean, we're not, despite what people might think how good we are, <laughs> <laughs> um, we're not out to make uh, any money. Hey, you know, if this. you go to other communities and watch their broadcasts, you know, it's not as professionally well done as ours. That's for sure. I mean, it's in some respects, there's not even any question about, uh, you know, the kind of job we do. And, you know, people say, well, you know, they're not that good. Well, we aren't that good, but we're better than some of the others. That's right. And uh, I think with the cameras and updated stuff that we've had here and, you know. The announcers are okay. The camera people <laughs> generally do uh, an outstanding really? job, and the direction is uh, really, really good. Yes, it is. And... Uh, so fire us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Myeri steps up, goes deep. He's got a receiver, almost caught, but incomplete to Matt Martin, no relation. <laughs> Good effort, though, by Matt out there. Oh, it was a great effort by Matt. He played it just like I would have, except I'd have caught it. Yeah. He's from Schaumburg, Illinois, by the way. But uh, Lakeland to go deep. Second down and 10, ball spotted on the 30. And you well, take we this stuff for granted too, but uh, I mean, boy, when we played, and even in oh, I wish I, mean, I've, I saw no myself on TV once, and uh, you know, it was just like a play or two. They had a some camera guys down from Green Bay to do our last game of the year, and uh, I think they showed a touchdown that I scored in that particular game. And you know, that's that's my the extent of I've seen myself play. Yeah, there was no such thing, and this basically started in. Uh, well, it's been going over 20 years now, TV8. Right, but I don't sports has been, uh, how long do you think they've been doing football games and basketball games, you think? Uh, I think it's over 20. Oh, uh, I don't remember it being it. When I was coaching at North, I don't remember all of it, but. Yeah. But it's been a while, and uh, it's too bad it's taken the turn that it has. Erdman again on the carry. He's been getting a lot of carries in his first half. And he's collected more grass. <laughs> yeah. Ball is spotted on the 16 yard line. Some of you may ask where Concordia is. It's in River Forest, Illinois. This is all part of the Illini Badger Football Conference where, as we mentioned before, Lakeland was a try champion a year ago. White in motion, then Mayuri turns around and calls a timeout with uh, 4.45 remaining in the first half. Lakeland on top, 34 to nothing. Is firstgov.gov. Brand new student loan applications on the site, baby. This calls for a celebration. <laughs> where we're obsessed with getting you government information. Make it to the Make it. What are those? Government surplus cars for auction. You posted those online last time. No, you did. I'm posting them online this time! Just log on or email us and Ow. get what you need. Firstgov.gov. Back at Lakeland College where the Muskies have just called a timeout and uh, Let's see if they got positive yardage here, Chris. 
We got so many lines. Where do you look for that? Ooh, 11 yards for Concordia. 461 for the Muskies. They're going to have 500 by half. Ooh, just out of the reach of uh, White, but he was held, but no call. Well, if you can't beat him, cheat. Okay. Isn't that what we do on Fridays? <laughs> well, that's just me. <laughs> having jerseys and stuff. Hey, it was, it was pretty nice. We finally got the play together on a Friday. I don't remember any passes. Uh, by the way, you, thanks to the Lakeland uh, stats guys for uh, getting us updated stats as we move along and through the commercials and things. It's really nice. Screen back. Oh, wide open. Oh, he's going to go into the end zone untouched. Touchdown for Lakeland College. John Gilmore again. Mayuri to Gilmore. A 16 yarder. Another touchdown for the Muskies. Ooh, they're going to have close to 800, 900 yards, Chris. Well, at this rate. Yeah, hopefully they, uh, second half to be on the ground a lot. That's the fourth touchdown pass of the half. John Gilmore is a senior from Kalkana. The Gauss, right? Aren't they the Galloping Gauss? Uh, Concordia, or Kalkana. Yeah, you're right. Kick is good. And with 4.32 remaining, 41 to nothing, Lakeland. When was the last time Lakeland won an outright conference title? I think we were here. Maybe 90, I'll say 97. Yeah, we were here at least, so I would say I was here for that broadcast yet. Ryan Myuri has uh, 10 carries for 154 yards, and uh, Brandon Erdman has 13 carries for 124 yards. I think Lakeland went undefeated. They even went to like Colorado and stuff to play. And Back then, they didn't take an automatic conference champ, if I recall right, Marty. They just took, and they had a limited playoff. What I remember is one year Lakeland went undefeated, and they were it was a different format. You had to be invited, and uh, they were not invited to the playoffs, right. even though they were undefeated for the season. Yeah, I remember, yeah. I think it was Mark Navarro was the quarterback, and he could, 1997. Yeah, we were right again. We nailed that one. Yeah, I remember Mark. Come on, Andy. Get us a tough one. <laughs> I remember that. And uh, they had an explosive passing offense. Those were only had the really long games. Yeah, Johnny Kulk was playing back then, the North, North grad. Weeks on the carry gets it out to about uh, 35. So I've been doing this for like eight, nine years. You have? Seems just like yesterday. Holy criminy. I know I, Brian's got one year on me. Of course, culture has got, uh, he's got a year on Methuselahs. <laughs> <laughs> Was that a Greek god or something? Or I don't know, he's an old guy, I know that. I didn't know they had TV in the ancient Greek times. Really? Weeks uh, gets it out to about the 39. Uh, but uh, anyway, seven they were 10 and all. Yeah, I was gonna say with the uh, Brian, he I think this is his 12th year. This is my 11th year working with uh, the TV station. Jackie Kramer, this is her first game. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get Keep it. Keep sticking around top. <laughs> this will be our last game. <laughs> Brian's saying there's one more year than that, or who knows? What? He's got one more year than that, what you just said. Oh, 13? And I got 12. There we go. Uh, but who's counting? Pick up a one yard. 
Makes it fourth down and one. Let's see what they do here, Chris. You know, I've worked with a lot of different partners and I hadn't thought about it this way, but uh, maybe nobody likes me. <laughs> they just well, they come I, and go. If I'm looking at these years right, I know it's been probably 96 or 97 when I started doing this. So if I've got eight, nine, at least I've put up with you for that long. Ooh, he may not have got the first down. They pushed him back pretty quick and they didn't. Yeah, I've been seeing Stu Hoffensberger around too. He's done an outstanding job here for a number of years. I saw him. Uh, he was at the golf course set one day we were there. Yeah, then I saw him out. Uh, he had a meeting in Mequon. I saw him. I saw him, as a matter of fact, I saw him Thursday night too, Marty, after the uh, ball game. Oh. At a watering There's, hole? There's Carrie in there and Andy. Yeah. Look at him. Carrie and Andy. They look warm. Those guys. You know. Next thing you know, they get like a small oven or something. They'll just be making pizzas in there, too. Yeah, really? <laughs> you think they'd share any with us? <laughs> I doubt it. Sean Lee, Lee on the carry. He's had a couple good games the last couple weeks. Ball spotted on the 33-yard line. He picks up seven yards on that carry. You know what? With these guys giving us the stats and all that kind of stuff, I don't hardly have to do anything. I can just sit and enjoy the game. Under two minutes left in the half. Lee again with the carry. Steps over one tackler and buries, barrels forward before he's dropped inside the 30 near the 25-yard line. Pickup of about eight yards on the play. Make it the 26. It would be a seven-yard carry. First and 10, Lakeland. Ball on the 26. A lot of wide receivers off here to the left. In motion is Royal. Myeri straight back. A little flip over the middle. Lee's got it. Eludes one tackler. Slips by another. And he's down inside the 10-yard line. Inside the 5-yard line with a first down. It's going to be first and goal. Ball on the five yard line. And that was a 21 yard pickup. Wow. That's who we were talking about. Sam Sheringer last year from Howard. He yeah. was the one who got that All American status, not Vandaloo. Vandaloo was a second team All Conference guy, though. Yeah, Sheringer was an too. animal boy. He was really good. Yep. And off to Lee, up the middle, touchdown. Another one for Lakeland. And, whoo, we're gonna have to pull out some stories from the 60s, Chris. Well, and you weren't even born then. <laughs> it's gonna be tough. Well, it's a good thing the Badgers are playing at 2.30, so I can catch the second half of that while you're at church. Lucchesi. On to attempt the extra point. That one is uh, good. And with 57 seconds remaining in the first half, it's Lakeland, 48, Concordia nothing. Yikes, what do you say to your team at halftime? Well, we've worked on our punting a lot. <laughs> So that's working pretty good. And uh, kickoff return team, we've done a lot. Well, I'll practice on that. I'll tell you what they haven't had a lot of practice on was their tackling, even though they've been on defense. Yeah, what, these, all these wizards here, do they have time of possession? They do, it's almost uh, even. That's what happens when you score so quick. <laughs> <coughs> When you look at some of the first half stuff, first quarter stats in Myuri, 28 yards. These are runs, 28, 36, 28, 14, and 14. And then uh, Erdman had a 24 and a 19. I mean, shoot. Picked up at about the 20 yard line, boom, barrel down. Getting off the pile is uh, Blaine Hornis along with a couple of his friends. It's 
going to be first and 10 for Concordia. Well, this might be the last chance we see some of the guys out here. Because I would think. Get them ready for next week. Yep. It would be nice to see some different players and new names, and we could mention some new cities. I'm looking for, I want to see Cole Roller play, because he's from New River, Arizona. He went to Goldwater High School. I want to see him play, number 80 for Lakeland. Oops, jumping offside was big number 99, Josh LaBelle, who is from Walla Walla, Washington, played for the Cubs. I know it's not Ernie Banks. <laughs> <laughs> no, not Ernie. Walla Walla, Washington? I couldn't tell you. I think it was. Remember that guy, Tom? Walla Walla. Sterling Sharp? No, not Sterling Sharp. It was Sterling somebody. Hand off to Weeks. He's not going anywhere. Hey, you don't have to do any adding up at halftime, Marty. No. Well, I, I should actually add it up to make sure those guys are right. <laughs> <laughs> should have one more play, and then it'll be halftime. Well, well, I'm baffled now. I can't remember that guy's name. Berkowitz will be home watching this broadcast. He's, like, Come on, He's in Arizona. That's right. He's in Fall League. Yep. There's a great, ooh, ooh. Vandaloo. Hello. That's my last play, he says, coach. <laughs> Unless you want to put me in. Weeks. Thank you. Good night, Paul Harvey. At the half, Lakeland on top, 48 to nothing. We'll have some stories from the 60s and some new jokes for you as we go into the second half. And there's the TV8 pumpkin. I remember when it first hit me. Applied energy in a forward direction equals human locomotion. What does this all mean, Doc? Well, it changed life as we know it. I thought, wow, this concept might actually change the way we get from point A to point B. I felt like Einstein inventing the telephone. <clears throat> I give you the human foot. Get up, get out, get moving. A message from the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons. Reach the spot, oh, one down for you, so you can see the truth, and I can change the world. I would be the sunlight in your universe if I could. Just getting ready to start second half action, Lakeland on top, 48 to nothing. Kick is taken at about the 12-yard line. And uh, returning that kick was uh, Chris Teppen. Uh, to say it was all Lakeland in the first half would be a huge understatement as uh, Lakeland it rolled up 517 yards to 15. But on the plus side, figuratively and literally, Concordia had negative yardage in the first quarter. So they uh, really stepped it up a notch in the second quarter. <laughs> oh yeah, I thought you could say positively uh, Concordia has the second half to play yet. That's, I think we're going to see a lot of different people out there in the second half. And uh, No kidding. And uh, <laughs> I was out there during the halftime and it, it's, it's uh, raining. Yeah, I was going to say it's raining a lot harder now than it was when we first got here. And uh, I think a lot of the fans that were here uh, know the outcome of the ball game and unless they have a son playing. Most of them are going to be disappearing. Weeks on the carry, Chris, that first play for uh, Concordia, and he picks up a yard. So it's going to be second and nine. Definitely no letdown by Lakeland. Well, give him a gain of two. As we thought might happen. Or, and they did have a few turnovers and mistakes, but they uh, didn't hurt him because the defense definitely stepped up, as you said, Marty, allowing just 15 yards of total offense in the first half. And very impressive. And... Uh, I know I'm, we said before I won't be here next week, but it should be very exciting next week, which will be senior day here. Next weekend, 1 o'clock start. So for all you... Uh, Dave Gallianetti will be uh, taking your spot. There you see Aurora, Illinois at Lakeland College. 
Third down and seven. Platt still at quarterback for the Cougars. He rolls out to the right, facing heavy pressure, and then he has to toss it out of bounds as he was ushered out of bounds by uh, Gary Clark. Well, you know, I like that idea by Concordia to roll out and give Platt some time to uh, maneuver because the Muskies just come so hard, but there's big Nick Zek. Uh, but uh, I just don't understand why they just, their patterns there. You get around two guys deep in the same area and not too many people short and uh, very difficult for uh, Platt to find anybody open. And Cordy on their first possession of the second half will be punting it away. And fair catch is called for and made by Mike Christian. I was just reading here about uh, Ryan Myuri. You know, he's, he's uh, really stepped it up a notch. He has uh, seven touchdowns rushing, and with his four touchdown passes today, has 12 on the season. And uh, he's been a big reason why uh, Lakeland's offense, offense has been so successful. And then uh, Ryan Vandaloo has been a big reason why the defense has been successful. He uh, is right up in the rankings in tackles for losses. Yeah, Vandaloo. Benton, Zach, a new quarterback here, Marty? Looks to be. Yep, number five is in there. That's Brad Wilk. Hand off to Lee. He's got some running room. He slips by one tackler, and he's going to be wrestled down up at the 45, and there was a face mask penalty. And uh, Milton Moses in his uh Tackling technique grabbed uh, Lee by the face mask and is going to get flagged. Good downfield blocking again by the Muskies. Hey, receivers. No and they're not going to call a flag on that? No. Nope. Well, good no call. I mean, yep. good Just hog tied him, didn't, didn't have the face mask. Ball is on the 44 yard line, 22 yard pickup oh, for Lakeland. Uh, Lee. Lakeland gets right up to the line, too. You think with a big lead like this, they might. Take a little more time in the huddle. Yeah, they're having a lot of fun. <laughs> Might as well keep running her. Well, it's one thing to have fun. It's another to just to annihilate somebody. But I guess yeah. they've been on the other end too this year, so. Brent Woodruff, I believe, on the carry. Pick up a two yards, makes it second and eight. Woodruff the up back, Lee the deep back. Wilk at quarterback hands it off to Lee. He pounds up and over the 50 down into uh, Cougar territory at about the 46. Pickup of eight yards on the carry. Well, I had a cheeseburger at lunch today from the stand and that was delicious. I was looking forward to that all morning. I had to wait till 12 o'clock or so to, to have that sandwich, but it was good. Always treat us pretty good out here at Lakeland. Enjoy it. Wilk on a keeper. Burrows over the 45 down to the 44. Yeah, first down. Well, Wilk has had just uh, one carry all season, so let's make it two. First and 10. Muskies. He's only attempted, I believe, eight passes on the season. He's six for eight, but uh, when you're way up, you're not going to do that. There you see the little banner there. What we were talking about earlier about uh, co-championship last year. It was actually a tri-championship. Whoa, fumbled by Lakeland, but uh, they get it back. Now Aurora, Concordia, and Lakeland all had six and one records. That's Concordia, Wisconsin. Uh, Concordia of Illinois last year, Marty, was 0-10 as well. So I don't know what they did in 2003, but they've got a long losing streak going on. Uh, I believe what happened last year, I think that uh, Concordia beat, uh, Wisconsin beat Lakeland, and uh, Lakeland beat Aurora, and Aurora beat Lakeland, so that's why you had to try, and because of points or something like that. Could you say that again a little bit slower? <laughs> Wilkes pass to Ali is complete. Ooh! Slips by one tackler, but not the second and the third. Good stop by Nick George, and then he couldn't hang on, but uh, 
held on to lead just long enough for his teammates to come over and make the stop. Wilk on a little dump off pass, completes it for about three yards. It's going to be uh, third down and 12. Wilk steps up, fires deep. He's got his receiver. By Bile, and he makes the catch. And uh, just so the fans understand this, uh, Eric Barrow, should, his name should have been pronounced Bile. And uh, had a little trouble with his punts, but uh, made a nice reception on that uh, pass. So it's first and 10 Lakeland. Ball is down to the uh, 26 yard line. Okay, to 27. Jeez. <laughs> Lee can't get away. He's tackled. Good stop made by Domingo Pierce for Concordia. It's going to be second down. Loss on the play of three yards. That pass play uh, a little earlier from uh, Wilk to Bile went for uh, 22 yards. Second down and 12. Wilk facing, faking, rolling. Now he tucks it under and runs. We got by one tackler. I'll tell you, that, uh, that Concordia guy Milton Moses really had a beat on uh, Wilk, but then he put his head down to make the tackle, and uh, Wilk just slipped right by him. You got to keep your head up. Right, and with the grass being so slippery in the ground, it really gives an advantage to receivers and running backs and obviously quarterbacks out there because the defenders are kind of flat-footed. And it's tough to get traction out there, and it makes the game a lot easier for the offensive players. Third down and six. Up the middle is Lee, he's got an opening and he's gonna go in for a touchdown. Whoa, it's like the parting of the Red Sea, Chris. 23 yard touchdown run for Sean Lee. There you're gonna see it right there. Boom, right through the middle. Not even touched. We could say the road is on, but that'd be back in the first quarter. The only thing that stopped Lakeland today was the... Uh, was Lakeland. Yeah, and their turnovers. I don't think they've punted yet. That punt is blocked. Flip it over, they're still trying to get something in. Sebast hit off on the play there by number 36, Domingo Pierce. Too bad is on someone that didn't even near the ball. Dan Lucchesi was the uh, kicker for Lakeland and uh, had his kick blocked. Uh -oh. It's been an adventure on these extra points, and we've got a flag on the yep. play. I think Lakeland's gonna get another opportunity to uh, go for the extra point. Lucchesi is uh, gonna try it again. I don't know if you can hear that in your headset, but right after I said it, Dave Gallianetti said it. Trouble is, he can't hear me. So, was, and he's replacing me next week. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good thing. <laughs> you better week. watch out. You might be just like Wally Pip. You know, he called in sick, and all of a sudden, uh, Lou Gehrig plays about 1,400 games <laughs> in a row before he got in the lineup. That time it was good. Now it's 55 to nothing, and uh, with 8:53 remaining in the third quarter, we'll be right back. If you give someone a fish, you feed them for a day. Teach someone to fish. You feed them for a lifetime. Give me a fish, and you'll feed me for a day. Teach me to fish, and you'll feed me for a lifetime. Through Volunteers of America, you can help change lives in your community. Uh, just draw a little comparison between high school and college. 
at the North game the other night. Oh, how many how many games in 20 plus seasons? It's got to be 700. No. Yeah, when you think about football and basketball and baseball. Nine plus 20 is 30. 500. But anyway, at the North game, the 50-50 raffle, what did Andy Herman make? 120 bucks? Oh, yeah. And here in the 50-50 raffle at Lakeland, it was 42. Yeah. Uh, well, we've had other producers, though, too, so it's not always... There's only one. Carrie. And that's Mr. Coatser. Oh, and another Concordia guy down. I was only off by 200. <laughs> you didn't even make a guess. I was trying to calculate in my head. Well, we don't have until Christmas. <laughs> by the way, I was a winner in that last Powerball. I don't know if I told you that. Yeah. I got the Powerball and won three bucks. <laughs> I got three new numbers waiting at home for tonight's drawing. I was uh, thinking about it today, but uh, I usually don't uh, do that unless uh, the the pot gets way up there. So you can, you wouldn't be happy with just $3 million? Uh, I think I could survive <laughs> on that. I don't know if my wife could. <laughs> <laughs> Weeks. And Weeks picks up a couple of yards. Be second down for Concordia. Pick up of about three yards for Weeks. At 25 is the play clock, not the score that Concordia has, by the way. And really, we just saw a work of art by Tom Retzak. Kept the clock going. He's trying his best. Platt back. Looking. Yeah, same thing. Oh, now he's going to fire it up over the middle. He's got a receiver making the catch was Andrew Johnson. And uh, Platt buying time on that rollout, was able to find a receiver open, and he made an excellent pass to the middle of the field, and Johnson made a great catch. I really like that situation, Marty, where Concordia has something option besides what they have there. And you're right, Johnson was wide open, but uh, he, he was got surrounded by like about five defenders, and he threaded the needle for that uh, completion. Yeah. Kempton Freeman from St. Louis made the hit number 20. 23-yard pickup on the play. I think that was uh, Dan Meyer on the carry, number 11. Or was it number five? Yeah, it doesn't matter. No, no. Good shot there by Brian. Pick up a six yards. Big, big 92, James Washington. Ball spotted on the 42. Inside handoff to Johnson. He barrels down inside the 40. And uh, he's going to be pretty close to the first down. I think he's got it. Everett Wood from Mich Michigan making a stop there. 57. I'm going to get some of these young men's names in the, on the TV here. Give him a little recognition. First and 10, Concordia. That's their uh, second first down of the second half and their third of the ball game. <clears throat> Lakeland not uh, blitzing nearly as much as they were early. No, they're just playing a straight 4-3. Weeks on the carry, gets it inside the 35. It's gonna be second down. Happy musky. Was that John Gilmore's uh, grandmother one? Yeah. He scored two touchdowns today. Thing is rigged. <clears throat> I take that $42 right over to Clemmy's tonight. Get some couldn't chicken. Pick, yeah, couldn't get a pick a better place to go eat. Or log cabin or in. Or the log cabin either. Log or. cabin in would be really good too. Both of them. A log cabin for uh, potato pancakes. Yeah, wealth is watering. 
I know what we're having tonight over at the Martin household. Leftovers. <laughs> oh, you But they're really good. They're really good. I mean, sometimes I have leftovers. My wife's a great cook. Give me some good food tonight. Then we'll watch the World Series. Third down and five. Platt rolling, rolling, looking. Passes right through the hands of the intended receiver, Ed Miller. Fourth down, let's see if uh, Concordia decides to go for it. Five twenty remaining in the third quarter. Lakeland on top, fifty-five to nothing. I don't think we'll see uh, Myeri anymore. He had ten carries for one hundred and fifty-four yards in the first half, and uh, Brandon Erdman had thirteen carries for one hundred and twenty-four yards, and uh, they really led the offensive attack in that very potent first half of action. Platt being rushed. He's given up ground. Finally throws it away. And uh, that should be intentional grounding. I don't know if they'll call it. Yes, they will. He just, uh, once he got his momentum going backwards, Chris is like, he couldn't do anything but keep going back. Brent Miller, a freshman from Menasha, applying the pressure. Menasha is the winner of the FVA this year, I believe. That was, uh, let's see, 17 and five, 22 yard loss on the sack. Loss of 22 plus the intentional grounding penalty. Whoa, and, and Lakeland's gonna get possession. Yep. In great field position. Decline is, uh, Lakeland declines the penalty and will just keep it at the 45, so it'll be first and 10 Lakeland. And uh, they have great field position. They can stack up more yards that way. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> good point. <laughs> Wilk, still at quarterback. <laughs> Second back through is uh, Lee, I believe that was. Lee or Brent? Wood, no, Woodruff, you're Brent right. Woodruff. Brent Woodruff, 5'9", freshman, out of Logansport, Indiana. It's just five minutes left in the third, just <laughs> five minutes in the third. Pickup of two yards. Could be a little slower going back to the ball here. Huddle a little longer. Wilk uh, fumbled the snap, and then he got it back, and then he got Ouch. banged down. I don't like that either, guys. Our legs are going left and right and over each other. Mm -hmm. And Matthew Pollock was the Lakeland wide receiver in motion. Uh, Wilk is, he got up, he's walking around. But uh, Lakeland lost a yard on the play, makes it third and nine. They got two wide receivers out here to the right. The widest being Jesse Ashour. Quick pass to uh, Woodruff is incomplete. So it'll be fourth down. Uh-oh. Are they gonna punt? I don't believe they had a punt the entire first half. They either turned it over or scored touchdowns. Trotting in is uh, Andy Jaskulski. Well, there's a guy they should have on the list here for uh, pronunciations. Oh, uh, Lakeland player uh, hedged before the snap, and it's going to be a illegal motion penalty. Well, they're not in a regular punting formation; they're more in a yeah, a little pooch kick kind of deal. Yep, catching punt so you don't get a quick rush, but uh, well, now they can do a regular punt. 
but I don't think they're gonna, Marty. Nope, doesn't look like it. Well, I think the rain slowed down anyway. Kicking the ball was uh, Jaskolski, and uh, it's downed at the 10 yard line. So a nice little pooch kick by uh, Andy. I like that play. Yeah, really. 40 yard punt. It's a good little weapon. First and 10 for the Cougars of Concordia. Hey, these Lakeland guys had some good jokes at halftime. The only problem is we can't tell them on the air. <laughs> First and 10, ball spotted on the nine yard line. Fumble. And uh, Platt fumbled a snap and got it back, but he lost a yard in the process. Oh boy. Goes most, from bad to worse. Most of the results are negative. You don't have to <laughs> yeah, drop it and make it any worse. Clock running, 3.20 remaining in the third quarter. 55 to nothing, Lakeland on top. 5.95, they're saying now. Total yards for the Muskies in the ball game. Weeks on the carry. And uh, he wasn't able to uh, muster up any positive yardage. Coming in is uh, Dan Meyer, number 11. When you look at the Lakeland sideline, Chris, I mean, they just got a ton of players. You know, there's probably close to 100 guys on the side, not on the sideline, but on the team. And you look over at the Concordia sideline, and uh, boy, they're really hurting for players. Yeah. Time out on the field that goes uh, to Concordia with uh, 2.32 remaining in the third quarter. It's Lakeland 55, Concordia 0. This is a tree that was never chopped down. To make a crutch that was never needed by a child who never got polio because vaccine was never in short supply thanks to people whose compassion wasn't either. Over the years, Rotary Club members have helped immunize over two billion children against polio. Soon, the world will be polio free. Rotary, humanity in motion. What school did former NFL player Pat Kern attend before Lakeland? Ooh, that's a good one. Before Lakeland. Pat Wisconsin. Kern, of course, played in the NFL for the Rams Wisconsin, and the Chargers. Minnesota, yeah, big time. Was a good player for the Chargers and then also worked in the front office for the Chargers after his playing yeah. career. Uh, Platt's pass is complete to uh, Meyer. I think he had like near the 30. Didn't he have like six touchdowns and a half or something out here for Lakeland or something like that? I don't know if they have that record here, but. Actually that uh, pass was out to the 20, Chris. I misspoke. He was an outstanding player back in the early 70s. First and 10. He still holds the record for touchdowns in a season at 21. I don't know, uh, he's got the most points too out here, most career points out here. And uh, yeah, that was an excellent year for Lakeland, the years when he was here. And Tim Seifert from Sheboygan North played, and uh, Paul Mackey, I believe it was, was their quarterback at that time. Coach Tomey. Oh yeah, Big started, John. Started in 67 when Kern was out here, and I guess uh, that helps. They were eight and one and seven and two the years Kern was here. Personal fall on Lakeland. But is the answer to the question going to be Wisconsin, though? No? Uh, well, I don't know. What were they? I know that Wisconsin and Minnesota were two of the choices. I think Concordia was another yeah. one. Yeah. 
I don't think that would be the answer. I would say. I'm going to say Minnesota. First and 10. Platt rolling, keeping, and banged out of bounds at about the 44 or 43 yard line. We're gonna spot it at the 43, so that's a four yard pickup for uh, Craig Platt. Lakeland on top, 55 to nothing. Two minutes left in the third quarter, Weeks has it. Uh, there's a guy, and he's, he's gotten the ball quite a bit, but he's uh, never uh, been able to uh, spring him for a long one. That'd be interesting to see uh, which, what play, uh, well they had a pretty long one on that pass play, a 20 plus yarder, but other than that, they haven't uh, gained much in terms of chunks of yardage. Nope. Pick up a two on that last play makes it third down and three. Or gain a three. Looks like the rain is coming down harder again. Weeks. Barrels forward over the 50 into Lakeland territory for a first down. So Concordia mounting a bit of a drive as we roll on down to the 48. The answer was Iowa State. <laughs> now if we'd have remembered that fourth one, that's the one we'd have picked. I don't think so. <laughs> now I saw it, I remember it, but I don't remember. Uh, I would not have said Iowa State, though, Marty. I cannot tell a lie. Yeah, I think I'd have stuck with Minnesota, too. Well, Concordia mounting a little bit of offense now. Johnson on the carry. Good pickup by Johnson. About seven yards. Now, you know, it doesn't seem like it's raining, Chris, because those girls are just oh. sitting there. Yeah, it is. Craig Platt remains a quarterback for the Cougars. Hand off to Johnson. He cuts it up and barrels down to the 35. Another Cougar first down. They are just rambling now. Be interesting to see if uh, Lakeland does run the table, make the playoffs, if uh, Whitewater, who came up here, will be their first round opponent. That ought to be interesting to see. Yeah, really. Who they uh, would draw. Well, Dave Gallianetta and I were talking at halftime, and you know, there's a huge disparity in Division Three football when you look at a team like uh, Whitewater and then a team that's really good like Lakeland. I mean, Lakeland's really good, but they're just, uh, you know, they're not in the same classification as Whitewater. And uh, I think when you look at it from the basketball standpoint, I don't think there's quite the disparity between teams. But when you look at a football team, you know, you're looking at having to have a lot of guys that are good. Yeah. Where basketball, you know, you don't have those, you don't need that many good guys to be competitive. Well, I know that uh, Coach Sobrowski wants to get to that level, like at the Whitewater level. and. That's why he scheduled uh, Carthage. They were a ranked football team, put Whitewater on the schedule, and unfortunately they lost two games, but like I said before, a very good chance to beat Carthage. And uh, Whitewater they were playing with for a while, but then it just steamrolled at the end there. Um, that but, shot uh, by uh, Brian Andrews. But Coach Zabrowski's, uh, you know, he, he went and played at Mount Union College, which is, which is just yeah. a powerhouse. And so he knows what it takes to get to that level. And that's what he'd really like for Lakeland to have here. And uh, it's just going to take some time. Is that Mark Holtzman? No. No. Okay. Mark Holtzman just got put yeah. into the uh, Hall of Fame, along yeah. with Rick Meyer yeah. from uh, Plymouth. And uh, we get the name of the girl. Yeah, Mark Holtzman's now the uh, principal, principal at, uh, at Howard's here. 
He was an outstanding athlete. <laughs> Deb Rindle was the uh, third member. Well, Deb Rindle Gabriel. <laughs> Platt, keeper, and is pushed back. He got it down to the 30. <laughs> third down, third down and five, ball spotted on the 30 yard line. You see, coach, I don't think you need the sunglasses, are they, coach? Just the, well, just the rain gear. Yeah. Not to be confused with rain deer. <laughs> Platt ducks under center. Hand off by weeks, hand off two weeks, and it's a scrum, and uh, Lakeland's gonna get the best of that. It's gonna be fourth down. Everett Wood there, 57, stopping that play. Pickup of only a yard, it's gonna be fourth and four. You know, it'd be <coughs> nice if the rain would stop so we could uh, put the equipment away. I watch it trickle on the uh, wood down here. Platt rolling. He's got room. Goes deep. Passes short. And then caught in the end zone. Touchdown. Good adjustment made by the receiver. Jeff Koenig. Jeff Koenig. Just a jump ball, Marty. Right. Dennis Landry, uh, Landry was back there, but uh, just got out jumped. And that breaks the shutout. Really? Well, good for Concordia. They hung in there and uh, pounded it on the ground. Here's someone we haven't seen yet. Place kicker. Yeah, that's uh, Dylan Trainer. Pretty he bored. He it up and uh, good. And with 12.51 remaining in the ball game. Concordia is on the board, but it's still Lakeland 55, Concordia 7. Simmons, today I want to talk to you about a very important subject, and cruelty to animals. Emmy was a victim of cruelty, and someone did something about it. Someone called the ASPCA and put an end to it, because Emmy can't talk. The fact is, animals are abused all over this country, and people sit by and do nothing. It's not slick, or fly, or cool, or none of that. It's just cruel. If you're aware of any animal abuse, go to ASPCA.org to find out what you can do. Now, make a difference. She can't do it for herself. There's a new experience around every corner. Back at Lakeland, where we're having a little trivia question with Tom Retzak. Where did Lakeland, now we, I mentioned to the fans that we'd have some stories from the 60s in the second half. Well, Kern and Seifert and Coach Tommy. Tommy and uh, Paul Mackey, and those were all guys that played in the 60s. And then Tom's question was, trivia, where did they play their football games? And I got half of it right, Legion Park. The other half was out at Kohler High School. Wow. Old Mac Legion Park. Yeah. Did the Redskins play there too? Red Wings. Are there Red Wings? Yep, yep, they played there. Nice return by uh, Kempton Freeman. Showing good speed. Yep. Kempton is a junior from St. Louis, Missouri. I'm sorry, did they play their games at Legion? Yep. Really? Yep. I remember going to some games there. Yeah, what about the... Uh... Uh, they probably would have played all over, Tom. I mean, they probably played at North and South. And, well, it's... You know, Plus, they didn't have lights at the high schools. No, they always played on Saturdays. Not shouldn't say that. They played uh, they played Saturday nights and some Sunday afternoons. Run right by uh, Shannon Fitzgerald for Lakeland. They're gonna keep it on the ground for the most part. Hanky on the field. Gerald, a freshman out of Two Rivers. Right. Trying to think, I was at this one Lakeland game, and they had this uh, very aggressive linebacker. 
and uh, he got out of control one game. I mean, he just took his helmet, you know, and he was actually swinging at the people from the other team. And uh, Kurt Brost went over to, come on, settle down, settle down. <laughs> he turned around and went after Brost with his helmet. Here's his own teammate. <laughs> Remember that guy, Tom? What was his name? The linebacker. It just slips my mind. Makes me mad. Ooh, big penalty, 10 yarder. First and 20. I'm Ball watch, spotted at the 44. Watching the geese go over the field. They're heading the wrong direction. They're heading south. It's never a good thing. There they are. Quack, quack. What it stucks. Pass is complete. And ripped down was uh, Shannon Fitzgerald. But uh, couldn't quite break that tackle there. Yeah, good pass by Wilk. Pick up about five yards on the play, though. Well, enjoy the victory, because the work begins again the next two weeks. Yeah, for sure. As Aurora and Greenville come in, both with one loss, entering this week's play. Yeah, it's not going to be easy next week. Well, good run by Fitzgerald. He gets it down inside the 45 to about the 44 or the 43. Still set up about a third and seven. Call it the 44. Pickup of uh, six yards. Ooh, a lot of them now. I think those geese decide to take a stop at a cornfield up here before they head south, get some late, late lunch. And off to Fitzgerald, right up the middle, big hole, oh! That was real poor tackling, bad effort that time. Fitzgerald goes all the way for the touchdown, 44 yards. Player of the game? Well, I don't know, but I'll tell you, those uh, Concordia defenders wanted nothing to do with Shannon Fitzgerald, watch this. I was gonna say, Not Concordia even a good player. handoff, right look there, at look at that. George. Well, that one guy just stopped. Yeah. That's not good. Got to give out better effort than that, kids. Well, good run by uh, Shannon Fitzgerald. We just heard, what, 650 now total yards offense. Well, line drive kick is uh, good. That makes it 62 to seven. You know, all you can do is uh, run the ball, but if you're not going to do any tackling, it's not going to make much difference. It's not like Lakeland's trying to rub it in. Rechargeable batteries let us go anywhere and do anything. But the freedom to go unplugged comes with responsibility. Look at that. Wow. The responsibility to recycle. If you've got old rechargeable batteries hanging around, take them in to be recycled. It's easy, and it's good for the environment. Check us out online, or give us a call at 1-800-8-BATTERY to learn more. Well, Fitzgerald is uh, halfway to the century mark with 51 yards rushing, and uh, Lakeland is uh, getting close to 800. They got 650 right now, and uh, Concordia, 102. Yikes. A good shot of uh, Brandon Clopton, number seven for Lakeland. Chesey kicking off instead of Billy Hughes. Horning picking his spots. Oop, that wasn't Horning. That was Travis Reeb. Reeb on the carry, on the, on the return, and he gets it out over the 35 yard line to about the 38. It's gonna be first and 10 Cougars. Well, you see those big uh, linemen pull out and go to the right, Chris. It was coming our way. You got a replay of that one carry at all? 
See those linemen pull out, come right into your uh, living room. There they are, number 79, the biggest of the two. And then Weeks cut it back. Actually a pretty nice pickup, pickup of four yards. Makes it second down and six. There they come again. But Platt keeps it, and he's going to, uh, he's gonna be close to a first down. Gave the same uh, motion on the pulling guards going to the right, and then uh, Platt faked the handoff and kept it. Something he should uh, do more often, I think. I don't think he's a horrible runner. I've seen him being chased <laughs> by enough muskies today, so you know he can run a little bit. Nice pickup by Platt. Picks up nine yards on that. This is not unlike uh, most games for the Muskies. Last year they were ninth in the Division Three rankings in total offense, close to 500 Whoa. yards. Whoa. Jumping offside for uh, Lakeland was uh, Derek Adamchek. He had that funny spelt name, but I knew he was on the pronunciation list, so I had to look down there. His last name is spelled A-D-A-M-C-Z-Y-K, and it's pronounced Adam Check. Now it's first down and five. Weeks on the carry, and he's hit and dropped. Good tackle made by Lakelands. Everett Wood. He Call, gobbled him right up. Called his name a couple times already. Loss on the play. Gary Clark hobbling off over here, sits down. He's from Scotland. <laughs> you can do your <laughs> impersonation again. <laughs> You should see my class, Marty. Oh, good reds. Probably the longest game of the day for uh, weeks, and uh, he paid for it, too. Yeah, his helmet ended up right in the Lakeland turf. Really? Take, take some of that grass back to River Forest with him. Ball spotted on the 38-yard line. A little disappointing finish for Sheboygan South, Marty. Oh, wow. Yeah, 49 to nothing. And uh, chance I know uh, Coach Pfeiffer thought they had an excellent chance of uh, beating East, and we did too. Yeah. Duck, but it's complete. Platt's pass to Travis Reeb, and you know, we've called Reeb's name a uh, number of times throughout the broadcast. That time it's for a 38-yard uh, touchdown. You get a look at it, and not a very good pass, actually. It was a duck, quack, 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 quack. But uh, was out there far enough for uh, Reeb to catch, and he made the catch, and it's a touchdown. Yeah, we talked about it in the FRVC. Just three teams from the conference ended up with a winning record, so that's all that gets to make the playoffs. And yeah. tell you what, Green Bay Preble drew a horrible first draw. Who do they got? Bayport. Oops. At home. They're a one, and they get Bayport a four. <laughs> That'll be tough for them. Extra point by Dylan Trainer is good. That makes it 62 to 14 with 8.41 remaining. Uh, when we come back, we'll talk a little more about the upcoming. Uh, high school football playoffs. I'll be seeing you in all the old familiar places that this heart of mine embraces all day through. I'll find you in the morning sun and when the night is new I'll be looking 
that about sums it up. I was just thinking, you know, Green Bay East is not going to make the playoffs, but uh, there's a team that as the season wore on really came on strong. You know, if it's like in basketball where if everybody makes it, they'd yeah. be a team that you'd really be kind of afraid of because uh, they're playing really well. But uh, the way the football playoffs work, they're not in it. So teams won't have to worry about uh, John Colstead's Green Bay East Red Devils. Oh, he wanted to go, but Chris Nitz stumbled over one of his own players, and uh, it isn't very often those up guys get to return the ball. You know, he'd like to get a little more than that, but uh, Lakeland has it, first and 10. Not a new quarterback, Marty. Andy, Jess, let's see. Let's see if he's on the list here. Nope. Nope, Jess Lusky. That's Beaver Dam. Yeah, the uh, Jess Kolsky. My bad. First and 10, Muskies on the 27. And he Jess fumbles. Kolsky uh, fumbled it away. Recovering the fumble was a Woodruff. No, check that. Number Fitzgerald. 25, Fitzgerald. Yep. Well, I know Green Bay, Notre Dame, they uh, they drew Little Shoot in Division Three. Little Shoot, of course, Coach Greg Enns, who... One time when you weren't here, he was here as a partner of mine. Oh, really? Yep. He's He'd be a good guy. Yep. That was a number of years ago when he was coaching. Uh, but he came out here one day to do a Lakeland game with me when you were someplace else. What could be more important than announcing for TV8? That's why I had him come. <laughs> <laughs> Take your spot. Uh, Manitowoc, I believe, is playing Hartford. Hartford played Sheboygan. South, I believe, and beat them the first game of the season. Uh, Sheboygan Falls will be playing Wapon, I believe, at Wapon. That'll be a tough game for them. Uh, Cedar Grove, I thought, got a real tough draw. They got to play uh, Fond du Lac St. Mary Springs, which is a traditional powerhouse. Yeah, but at least they catch them at home. Right. It should help a little bit. Inside handoff, Fitzgerald. Gets just short of the 40, but it will be enough for Lakeland first down. So I always like high school playoffs. It's, it's too bad that. Uh, I'll tell you, Fitzgerald is going to get pretty doggone close to the century mark. They keep giving him the ball. There you see, runs low and hard. What was he at? He 50, had 51, 51 yards, yards yep. but uh, I haven't been adding him up here as we go along. I've just been writing down the ball carry and stuff, but the ball is up to the 39. 65 yards, I'm told. Good idea. Yeah, tuck it in and run, young man. That's right. Jess Kolsky puts his head down and gets a big gainer. It's about 16 yards on that keeper. Yeah, freshman from the Beaver Dam. Beavers. Clock running. We're at uh, 6.53 What's remaining. The score? A bunch to not enough. <laughs> you see the replay? Good speed showed there. And right in there. That's right. Oh, they had to show the score. <laughs> <laughs> Just if anyone forgot what you had said before, Marty. Well, enough to not enough. <laughs> Too much to not enough. Good fake. Pulls it out. Oh. Uh, number 90 for Lakeland. Joe Renzelman had some fun. Renzi, Sheboygan Lutheran product, threw a good block on a Cougar defender, knocked him right off his feet, and allowed his quarterback, Andy Jaskulski, to uh, gain a couple extra yards. Yeah, that ball was handed in to Josh Gordon, a fullback, but he pulled it back. I'm sure Josh would like to have a little carry too, let him have some of the fun. Give me the ball. Second back through is Fitzgerald. He's got room to run. He's going to go right down the sideline and in for a touchdown. 38 yards. He's got to be over 90 now, eh? 99? 103. That's three backs, Chris, over 100 yards in the ball game. There you're going to see it. He tiptoes the sideline. Avoided one tackle right there. 
And once he got around the corner, he could have ran all the way to Manitowoc or Keel. He could have gone yeah, right really. to Keel. Only if he had the endurance. <laughs> he might have had to walk a little bit. Whoa, 68 points. 723 total offense. Can we see a record here? Game points, game yards, season yards. Going through my stats here. And I don't even need Andy. I can do it myself. <laughs> Put Andy out of business. You better watch out. <laughs> Andy who? Could be a, we could see a record here. Most yards in a ball game. Whoa, line drive right in the seat of the pants of a Lakeland uh -oh. lineman. And they're off. I bet he doesn't make it. He Get rid of it. Of course. Get rid of it. Oh, you big. I mean, come on. If everybody else pitch it. You got to pitch it, too. Just wing it. Bumbling and stumbling. Not a good kick. But that extra point again was no good. I'll tell you just about every extra point Lakeland has had. Watch this line drive. Boink. Right in the seat of the pants. <laughs> 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 He's got a good leg. He just doesn't <laughs> kick very accurately. That one probably hurt. <laughs> I mean, last time, I mean, last time you get in front of me in line. Oh, shell line over there. 68 to 14, and we still have 5:38 left. Oh boy! Well, we're having fun. <laughs> we are. Brian, yeah, great shot there, Brian. The Marcus Zorro. I'm really not a Concordia fan. <laughs> See my Lakeland sweatshirt? <laughs> I'm not hiding my face. I'll tell you, Marty, you're going to be taking the TV down because I don't trust myself. You know, and well, this TV here around. is so expensive. <laughs> the heck, we'll give it to Retzak. He hasn't done anything all game. <laughs> oh, great. Yeah, if he would have done anything right, he would have clipped off some more time. Having some fun out there on that kickoff was uh, big number 56, Evan Lang, a freshman from Tampa, Florida. They know how to play football down there. I don't think Kerry's going to replay that, but I'll tell you, Evan Lang just pancaked one of the Cougars. First and 10, Concordia at the 35. Uh-oh. Weeks is going to have a big gainer on this one. Uh -oh. He's around the corner at the 50, the 40, and is knocked down at the 30. There was that long gainer he was looking for. Travis Jervis now playing defense? Oh, no, it's Mike Phillips. I'm sorry. Freshman. Oh, all the way down to the 29. Phillips from Green Bay West. Oh, that's Mike Phillips. He played baseball, too. He might be playing baseball out here, too. There, big pickup that time, 36 yards for Weeks. Weeks again, hit right at the line of scrimmage and stopped for no gain. Uh. Maybe a half a yard, but we're gonna call it 10, so no gain. Finally, Tom listens to me. Actually, I think we could give him a yard on that, Tom, don't you think? We'll give him one. He's been working hard all game. Oh, in the backfield, making the sack Gary. for Lakeland was Gary Clark. Not to keep confused with the 49ers, Gary Clark. Would you like to pronounce his hometown? I want to do it for my sheet. All Gary right. Clark is a 6'3", 230-pound freshman from Scotland. <laughs> kill, kill, kill Murray? No, kill Malcolm, Iverclyde, Scotland. Kill Malcolm. Sounds good to me. Kill our Malcolm, fans. Iverclyde. Maybe that'll be a reason for our fans to come out here next week and watch the game so they can get this program and see if they can pronounce it. <laughs> but they'll need the book first. Uh oh. Timeout. Why would we want to call a timeout? 
That's all right. That gives us a chance to play another PSA. So with 351 remaining, Lakeland on top, 68 to 14. Sterling Marley. There's nothing better than great fans who cheer me on in a 40 car. While watching the race, many of our fans like to enjoy a cold beer. And that's okay for 21, but if you choose to drink, please do so responsibly. Avoid drinking to excess and never drive drunk. Traffic deaths involving alcohol have fallen on dramatically in the last 20 years. So let's all do a part by drinking responsibly. This message is brought to you by the National Beer Wholesalers Association and this station. TV8's next broadcast will be, oh, we're back here next week. <laughs> I thought we said that before. It's old news. But we'll be here. Dave Gallianetti will be my partner. Chris will be sending us updates from Las Vegas on how he's doing. I'll have to check the line out when I'm out there, see what the betting line yeah. is. Platt fires it at the sideline, but it's incomplete. Dan Meyer was the intended receiver. The defender for Lakeland was Dan Hurl. Just making sure because there's a two nines. Make sure we get the right one. I want to know how a young man from Scotland finds out about Lakeland College and then plays football. Coach from Britain. Was here last year and did they recruited. play? Uh, they must play rugby or something over there, huh? Oh, they had a football team. Okay. And does he fly home for a Christmas vacation? Boom! Making a catch for Concordia was John Lally. Nope, not Lally. It was Sean Yerkes. Number 30, 13. But not enough for the first down. Lakeland will take possession. First down, Lakeland at the 22-yard uh, line. Hey, Chris, maybe they'll be able to run out the clock. Well, if they take, you know, almost the whole time on the clock once we get this going here, you could, but. And if they don't get another 60-yard touchdown run, Fitzgerald oh. around the corner, stays in bounds, and now he's run out of bounds, but not until he got over the 40-yard line. Eh. You know what? Run up the middle. Fitzgerald is a freshman from uh, Two Rivers. You run outside like that, that's... Ay, ay, ay. You run out of bounds, too. Well, let's run it up the middle. <coughs> I mean, you have a chance to score again, then, if you run it outside. I guess you have a chance up the middle, but the chances are less likely. Yeah, 18-yard pickup. Yikes, he's just gashing the defense. He could be our leading rusher. He could be the player of the game. He doesn't need many more yards to uh, pass Myuri, who's had us, who has 154. Coach must have heard you. Ran it up the middle. Quarterback is uh, Kyle Myers from Beaver Dam. Pick up a three yards. By Fitzgerald, there you get a good shot of uh, Kyle Myers. Inside handoff to Fitzgerald, strips by one tackler, and it finally takes two other guys to rip him down, but not before he gets inside Concordia territory at about the 40, 46 yard line. First and 10 Lakeland. You know, sometimes you want to run out the clock, but the defense doesn't cooperate by stopping you. Yeah, 235 remaining in the ball game. Lakeland has been uh, content to keep it on the ground. Whoop. Sh 
And then Fitzgerald picks it up, and uh, he's actually on that fumble. That kind of looked like a Scottish play. Yeah, really. Rugby. The old single wing, or maybe. Fitzgerald uh, loses a yard on the play. Actually made a pretty good scoop. He might be able to play some shortstop out here. Ball is back to the uh, 47. There's Everett Wood there. Good shot of him. He had lots of tackles late in the ball game. Manistique, Michigan. Myers ducks under center. Gives it to Fitzgerald. He's tripped up. Fitzgerald is a big guy, six foot, 190. Picked up about seven yards or six yards on that play. It's third down and five. Very impressive uh, performance. We knew it might get like this, Marty, but uh, you just now I didn't realize it'd be so overpowering on defense and offense in that first half. It was very impressive by the monkey muskies. The mucky muskies. Ooh, first back through is a fullback. And I think it was uh, Jerome Daly, but we'll have to see. 33. Chris Nitz. Nitz was the guy who took that kickoff and uh, tripped and fell. But uh, Nitz got it down to the uh, 36. Should be, be the 36 yard line. Yeah, it should be the last play here, Marty. As I said, they they did what they had to do. They're in uh, game winning formation here. Did what they had to do to hold Myers, serve. And Myers takes a knee, and that'll be the last play of the ball game. Lakeland with a huge win, 68 to 14. And uh, you're gonna want to stay tuned next week. I'd recommend you people come on out and watch this Lakeland Muskie team. They have an excellent squad and they'll be uh, playing Aurora of Illinois for an opportunity to uh, play in the Division Three playoffs. And then of course, there'll be more on that in the paper. You'll be able to follow that. Uh, we're gonna take a short break and come back. We'll have some final, final stats for you and then we'll wrap this ball game up. Wisconsin, life's so good. Call 1-800-432-TRIP or visit TravelWisconsin.com. Back at Lakeland College where the Muskies have rolled to a 68 to 14 victory and in the process they rolled up 763 yards to 200 for uh, Concordia. And uh, they had three players, uh, Chris, in, uh, went over the century mark in rushing. Uh, Mayuri, Fitzgerald, and Erdman. Uh, Fitzgerald finished with 139 yards and uh, just a very easy win for the Muskies. And uh, sometimes that's not always good when you're coming in the next week with a real hard game. Yeah, and uh, we were wondering if they have a letdown after last week, but obviously that was changed quite quickly with the uh, getting over the turnover bug. Uh, and they scored quickly and effectively, and the defense was, as I said before, was very impressive. And any time you get 763 yards on offense, you know basically what the results were. And we had a feeling it might happen this way, and it, it just was that way. Lakeland was dominantly the, the better team, but the next two weeks are the big weeks for him, and best of luck to uh, Coach Zabrowski and his squad. Thanks for doing the broadcast, Chris. Uh, good luck in Las Vegas, and uh, Dave Gallinetta will be my partner next week. Uh, for the crew, Brian Andrews on the field camera, Andy McKillop assisting uh, Kerry Kautzer in the truck, Jackie Kramer on the top camera. I'm Mike Martin saying, for Chris Wright saying, so long everybody, thanks for watching and we'll see you down the road. <laughs>